Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Hey kids, did you enjoy Ocean's Eleven? Well, guess what? This weekend there's a movie coming out from the director of Ocean's Eleven with a different cast and setting, but the same storytelling style, the same story beats, and an almost identical ending. But, 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 you know what? Just like The Force Awakens, Logan Lucky takes the familiar beats we loved and makes them into something fresh and vital and fun, and I really liked what I got despite the shameless mining of existing territory. Logan Lucky could be called a deep-fried version of Ocean's Eleven, not as slick or groovy as that film, but that's completely understandable. That film was about professional con men in glitzy Las Vegas. This one is about low-rent bumbling country bumpkins robbing a NASCAR race in Charlotte, North Carolina. It requires a more meandering tone, and director Steven Soderbergh certainly provides that and a lot of chuckles along the way without getting lost in the woods. Now Channing Tatum, spotty accent aside, rounds out a uniformly excellent cast as Jimmy Logan, one of three siblings, the others being Adam Driver and Riley Kyo, who... Kyo? Kyo? Riley Kyo? Riley... I'll put her name down there, Riley something or other, who plot to rob the racetrack and the first thing you need to know is that none of these characters are idiots Although I think the movie wants you to assume that they are at first. These are people who have just as much brilliance at planning a heist as Danny Ocean and his crew, but are repeatedly underestimated because of their slow manner of speech, or their general dishevelment, or their southern accents, or all three. Adam Driver's character, who would probably steal the whole movie if it weren't for Daniel Craig, is an Iraq war veteran with a prosthetic arm who talks with a very slow, twangy cadence. But both Driver and the character he plays demonstrate repeatedly that they're game for anything, and that really makes all the difference when you're trying to plan a heist. Daniel Craig is also so much fun to watch, you can hardly take your eyes off of him, and his character is much smarter than he lets on as well. Everyone is smarter than they let on in that movie, and that's, that's something that just tickles me when you see a movie like this. Now, Steven Soderbergh here pulls the trick he pulled in the Oceans movies of showing you aspects of the plan, certain details, but never showing you the whole thing beforehand. His camera will zoom in on something like a fireman's uniform in the trunk of a car, but not show you what role those uniforms will play until much later when the heist itself is playing out, and then you remember, oh yeah, they had those fireman's uniforms. This complicated web of setups and payoffs worked great in Ocean's Eleven, and it works well again here. Steven Soderbergh even, now this is how talented he is, Steven Soderbergh can even bring a new dimension to the most cliched of all movie scenes, the one in which a father races to arrive in time for his daughter's recital, and that scene fits right into the plot that involves the heist and plays out on a much different emotional level than I was expecting. I loved it. Is Logan Lucky a perfect movie? Well, no, there's a subplot with Seth MacFarlane as a sponsor and Sebastian Stan as a race car driver that never really gets off the ground, and another with Catherine Waterston that generates a lot of possibilities, but never really pays off in a way that maximizes its potential. I personally would have loved to see her character play a more integral part in the action, the same way that Julia Roberts played an integral part in Ocean's Eleven. But, but these are minor quibbles. Ocean's Eleven was a perfect movie, and Logan Lucky is a really, really good one. Ocean's had a great villain that we wanted to see get robbed. This one has more heart, and a pretty delightful riff on Game of Thrones that had me howling, and plenty of reprises of John Denver's Take Me Home Country Roads, which now I have stuck in my head all week. I'm going to award Logan Lucky a large bag of popcorn. This is a movie with modest ambitions that tells a familiar story about lovable characters in a unique setting, and I personally ended up having a pretty darn good time at the theater, and I believe you will too. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us, please, by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Logan Lucky in the comments as well. Let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I... I am incarcerated.